Good Wednesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and thank you kindly for joining us on Real Talk with Keith Smith. It's a pleasure to connect with you through the I Love Seville Network on a show and a network that literally are growing every day. Those details um, coming this week. Real Talk with Keith Smith, the second longest running show on the I Love Seville Network, and we're quite proud of that. We're heading, I believe, into our fifth year. Um, it feels like decades. It uh, feels like decades. No, no, no. Uh, we're... we're uh... Yeah, I think we're in our fifth year, actually. I believe the show started um, before... When did the show start? Judah, do you have that yeah, answer? Yeah, so, so the, that's really unfair of asking me. I have a hard time remembering what the hell I did yesterday. Judah might be able to check on that, our esteemed I, director and producer. I think our first show was in 18, maybe 19. Was our first show in 18? I thought it was... Judah well, will get us those details. Yeah, because we, we did... Um, we did a couple on the I Love Charlottesville network. Right, right. right. And then we started real Well, talk. on the I Love Seville show. Correct, Seville yeah. show, thank you. On, on that, I have to take a couple more sips of coffee and get this Barry White voice thing going <laughs> here. And I have extra Ricolas for, mm. for us here. But um, look, I know the, the, big, the big news in real estate is... Right? I lost a bet. You lost a bet. That's you, the big news, period. Upzoning is approved. It was approved on Monday or when the clock struck midnight right around there. I stayed up and watched pretty much till the end, um, realizing that this was going to be a, a fairly historic um, vote. Michael Payne in today's Daily Progress, Neil Williamson, I'm sure you, you read that today. I read it as well. Called it the most historic vote he will make in his two terms on council. Um, Brian Pinkston and Lloyd Snook alluded that nothing, this is going to have no impact for maybe three years. Yeah, more than that. And, the, and, and today's newspaper. Yeah. Um, I have highlighted that I think that the affordability impact that this is going to have on the community is next to none. I think that this will increase density eventually, but not from an affordability <coughs> standpoint. But I'm curious of your take yeah, of what happened. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, w it was a bit of an unfair bet. I, I kind of, I kind of knew this was going to happen before the end, the end of the year. But, uh, but I did take a quick look. I just wanted to share this with you. It's not in your package. I just did some quick numbers this this morning. Okay. Because I've been trying to take. I wanted to take a look in Charlottesville. Uh huh. Single family detached, no new construction. Uh huh. And I was just looking at the volume of sales. In other words, the number of units that that are actually closed, homes that actually closed on it. So year to date, we're at 282. Okay, and Judah's got a slide for this, I believe. Uh, no, this no? is this is this, this is, is your notes. notes. Oh, this okay. is this was uh, a half an hour, 45 minutes worth of work before I ran out the door this morning. Okay, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to see in the city of Charlottesville when was the last time we came close to that number? Uh huh. Do you have any? Do you want to take a guess on when it was? And what was the number again? So we're at 282. For single family detached. Single family detached sold. This is not condos. This is not attached. These are just single family detached homes because, you know, that's what this whole zoning was about. And, right? and what time period? So this is the, a year to, year to date. So There's this been 282 is, single family detached, no new construction. Standalone homes in 2023 sold only 282. Last time, last time that number was like that was in 2011. That is a poultry small about and the, the highest year was did you hear that viewers and listeners was 2021 2021 how many was 2021 427 that's a substantial delta so these are single family detached now you got me questioning myself i these, i these are single family detached i did this very quickly uh, on on the morning but we'll, we'll go ahead and double double check it but i i was conversating with my friend good friend Woody, Woody Fincham. But while you chat a little bit, I'll just double check that. Judah, do you have a three shot ready to go? Yeah. Get a three shot ready to go and let us know if you, do you have the number for the first Real Talk with Keith Smith episode? Yeah. Why don't you three shot and we'll get you on screen. Look at, is that an Ann Wickhauer original first, that sweater you are wearing? No, it's not. It's a fantastic sweater. Thank I want to highlight that you're looking quite spiffy today. What is the Real Talk with Keith Smith debut episode one? Episode one was in May of 2019. May of 2019. So the four year, the five year marker is this May. Yep. What day on May? Day in uh, May. Let's see. No, that number's right. That's why. Was the third. So May third is your five year anniversary of Real Talk. May third. We got to write that down. We should write that down. We should make a big uh, splash. Uh, before, before I just double check that number. It's right. Two eighty two. Wow. 
282, January 1, 23 to 12, 20, 23. So it's, it's year to date on that single family, uh, single family detached in the city of Charlottesville. I drop out new construction. It really isn't a big thing in, in, in Charlottesville. It's 280, 81. And you have to go back to 2011 to get somewhere close to that. And that number's 266. Kevin so, Yancey says the city cannot get out of its own way to streamline any of these processes. Yeah. We'll talk about that in the program. It did, it did approve the Verve, and it did approve that Ivy Road project. It, and, those, and those are huge. Um, those are huge um, <clears throat> Can you density stuff. Go, go ahead, Keith. So those are, are you know, Lock those that will, door if you can, Judah. Yeah. So those will be huge density. We had our fans coming in. I see that. Yeah. I see that. So, uh, you know, so th th those will be huge projects to move in there. But they, you know, look, I, I, I've said this before. It's going to be a bell curve. It's going to be a little, it's going to be flat for a while. I think, you know, if we're doing this show in 2023, which is another 10 years from now, so that'll be 15 years. 2023 is this year. No, excuse me, 2033. Okay. Okay. Uh, for this year, um, uh, for, in 10 years, we'll know what happened. It's going to take 10 years. It's going to take 10 years. And, you know, if everybody thinks we're going to have 50,000 houses, additional 50,000 units pop up, it, it's just going to take forever to come through. What do you think it's going to do for affordability? Yeah. It, so, as I've said before, I'm a proponent. Yeah. I think, I think this was a good thing. <laughs> I think this is going to take a long time for affordability. That's what I meant by the by the by the curve, the bell curve. Stuff's going to be be expensive. Units or accounts are not going to jump, go through the roof. I I mean, I'm just shocked that the volume of sales in the city of Charlottesville is at 2011. I figured it was 15 and 16. We were talking about that forever, and it's 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 literally a 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago before it was matched to the volume of sales that, that we have right now. And that's why everybody's kind of, in our field, is kind of hurting Oh yeah, a little, a little bit on that. But just think about it. Somebody should do a, a Google search on what the 30-year what the, um, mortgage was in 2011. I can do that. Third, so sales volume, single family detached, no new construction in the city of Charlottesville is at the equivalent, equivalent levels of 2011. 2011, yeah. 2011. That is... Um, a factoid for a cocktail party for you guys. And then, and then, you know, when we start looking, so in the beginning of the year, when we start looking at county by county and jurisdiction by jurisdiction. What do you think it was in 2011, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate? I have it right in front of me. I think around six. This will shock a lot of people. Four, six, five. Yeah. Four point six five. Yeah. Well, they were lowering the interest rates because we were still trying to get out of the out of the time of great unpleasantness. And this year they were between seven and eight. But, but if you would have bought a house in 2000, in Charlottesville in 2011. You're doing all right. The average sales, <laughs> the average sales price was 312,000. The median was 261. We are now at same volume of sales or thereabouts. We're now at 612,000 as average and 506. But here's really, really interesting. Right, right now, the last three years, uh, 23, 22, 21, the city of Charlottesville, single family detached, the average days on market is 24, <coughs> medium, seven. It's pretty much 22 was 22 day average. They're, they're pretty close. 22 to 24, five to six days on average. 2011, 107 was the average days. Days on market. 67 was the median. Man. So we went the same sales volume back in 2011. The average days on market went from 107 to currently 24. Median went from 67 to 7. But in the last three years, we've been averaging either five days, six day, days, seven days, as far as medium, medium, medium on it. And it really didn't jump when you get above. And we've been talking about this. What is the, what is the point that it starts you know, shifting a little bit? It didn't shift until 2012 at 55. So we went 7, 14. We had 33 days on market in 2014 as an, as an average. So, I mean, we're just, it's just, 
you know. Do you expect those levels to change in 2024? No, no, I, 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 I don't. I, I think, you know, again, we're just focusing on the city of Charlottesville at the moment. I don't think so, buddy. I think what we're going to end up seeing is the same kind of things that prices are going to increase inventory is not going to is not going to increase this is a great thing you know i'm i've been a huge proponent of this right um you and i may be on different fences on different sides of the fence on it but the realistic thing it's going to take forever for it to for it to impact they don't even know how they're going to implement it nevertheless this is just the zoning right they have to figure out how they're actually going to implement it. You can roll in, well, first of all, it's not going to go in effect until February something, right? 24th, if I remember correctly. Sometime in, yeah, in, in February. February. Sometime That's right. in February. This was something from Neil Williamson. He's watching the program. Hey, Neil, Neil how you doing? You're a uh, valued uh, member of this community. I read his website, Free Enterprise Forum, often. He wrote this yesterday. The city council decision to evaluate all site plans submitted after August 31st under the new zoning code seems ripe for such a legal challenge. Yeah. How could the applicants conform to an ordinance that was not yet settled law? So basically, any plan submitted after August 31 of 2023, 2023 or under the new upzoning that is not finalized until February of 2024. So, so you if know, all these people that spent all this money to submit these plans are now under a completely different set of rules. Um, That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. The first, Neil, as Neil highlighted. As first thing that comes to mind is, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Right? Yeah. So, yeah. I've, I've been around this world a long, I know long, you have. long enough to know. And the rule always was is that if you, put an, if you submit a completed application, the word completed is an important part of this statement. If you submit a completed application, the zoning at the time of that application being submitted is is what's applicable to that application. So what they're saying is we're going to retroactively go back and change all that. Now the question is is how many are in the system? How many applications did they have in the system from August until now? They may not have many. Well, they may not have any. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to answer to that. But just to think that, that I, I don't know what they were thinking, right? Because that's always. I mean, I, I've been doing this for three and a half decades. It's always because that's the, that's the um, developer one on one kind of path, right? If you look like the zoning ordinance is going to change, and the current zoning ordinance is in favor of what you're trying to do, just let's talk about math, right? you know, it's the right density, whatever it is, you want to submit your application as quick as possible in there so that you're in, you're in the system. And there's, um, there's this term called, um, oh God, I, I just lost it. Let's see if you can help me out here. It's not um, vested. Okay. Right. So if you're if you submit an application and you're vested and you pay an application fee and you are going through the process, then you are in the vesting process, right? And you're in the process of going ahead and submitting. I I can't see how they. Uh, I'm I'm curious what Lloyd's position on that is because as a lawyer, as a lawyer, because I, I can't I can't see how they can retroactively turn back the clock. And can you put in perspective the costs to submit these plans and then the, the entire landscape or rule book well, changes? So it depends on what we're talking about okay. here, right? right? So if we're talking about um, converting a garage into an ADU, you know, the cost on that, it, you know, is expensive, right? The application fee is expensive. You know, the, 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 you have to do the engineering for it, so forth and so on. When you start getting these larger projects, you're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of that. So once you start making these applications, just the application fee alone goes typically by square footage, by number of units, and so forth and so on, um, is a huge amount. I, I don't, I didn't read that, so this is the first time I've heard this. I can't see how they can um, enforce that. I, I don't. I think that's unenforceable. Well, I mean, we have multiple people commenting on the feed that that, that sounds illegal. Well, I think it's that, that's what I mean by unenforceable, right? I just don't think that that they could they can enforce it, particularly if they if they said this isn't taking effect until February. 
The article or the story on the Free Enterprise Forum is headlined Winston Churchill and Charlottesville's new zoning ordinance. Again, Neil does a fantastic job. Um, he, in very approachable terminology, breaks down what he saw at council. Um, he highlights the role of Albemarle County on this. If Albemarle County still throttles the development area to 5%. Yeah. We talked what, about this, you and I, um, on Monday, right? And, and I, I think the, the best path, this is just my, for what it's worth, my opinion, the best path forward to affordability, and the, let, me, let me rephrase that, the fastest path forward to affordability is for Albemarle County to look at this 5% and grow it. Um, th this, what got approved, is a great thing. I, 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 you know, it, it's a, right, a step in the right direction, but it is not going to be as impactful as everybody thinks it's going to be. And the reason I wrote down 2020, it's going to be 2033, is that's when we're going to see if this actually had a huge impact. It's going to take 10 years before that. And what is really going to be the matrix to determine if it was successful or not um, in the next 10 years? Is it affordability? Is it more units? But well, the whole point of this is for affordability, right? Isn't that the main motivator? It's the main motivator on it. It's it, look. I, I think I was uh, part if it of, doesn't breed affordability in ten years, yeah. is it considered a failure? No. So I, I, it could be affordability. I think that could be the underlining thing. I think the underlining uh, intent is to increase. Um, Inventory, increase units. And if you increase units, the theory is... Stabilize you, prices. You stabilize prices, right? Yeah. On, that, on that kind of thing. The, the question is, is will it increase units? And we've talked about this before. Low-hanging fruit, garage conversions, those are going to come out pretty hard and he hot and heavy. We've got, depending on who you talk to, anywhere between three to 4,000 hotel rooms short in this town so you know if you've got a garage and you want to do an airbnb here you go here's your opportunity to to convert that into a, a unit and do that the garage the basements are not going to be as much as one thinks because of building code requirements but we've talked about this on the show a bunch of times okay now i'm going to do i'm going to you know jerry and i are going to get together and buy something in belmont just to pick up a, a thing Right, and we spend X amount of dollars for it, and we now can go ahead and put, let's say, two more units in the back or three more units off of an alleyway. We can go ahead and do that. The development costs to do that is going to be astronomical. Connection fees, right? It's just, it's just going to be very expensive to do. So who's going to be doing this? Wealthy people. Or or end. You say like what we did out in Land Trust? Well, that's what we did out in, in Seattle and Portland and yep. it worked. Right? The land trust went ahead and signed the land lease with um, property owners to go ahead and build a unit on there and did a ninety nine year lease on the back of their properties off of an alleyway and they got a t huge tax credit from the uh, from the cities. And they got a piece of the pie, piece of the monthly rent. And this is what they did. They, they put affordable housing units back in the back of these, these homes. But they were really like onesies and twosies. They were not huge volumes of, of, of units. Um, this comment's come in for Keith Smith. And viewers and listeners, let us know your thoughts, and we'll relay them live on air. John Blair on LinkedIn is watching. He says, I really enjoy the show. Um, Keith's numbers are very interesting. The question I have for Keith is this, with the mandatory 10% inclusionary zoning provisions starting at developments of 10 units, what is the <laughs> unit number on a project where the 10% inclusionary zoning provision becomes sustainable for a new development? 50 units, 100 units, does this new development code effectively require scale for new projects? It's a damn good question. Well, he answered it. Yeah, he knows the answer. He answered. Yeah, he yeah John answer. Smart. He knows the answer. He knows the answer. Yeah. He answered yeah. it. That's the problem. It's going yeah. to be scale. Yeah. Right. You're not going to be able to do these. And explain what he's saying in very simple terms. <laughs> in Cindy Luhu terms. Yeah, Cindy, Cindy Luhu. Luhu because this is right up your alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me. Uh, uh. <laughs> With your experience, I mean. Um. 
Yeah, so, the, and this is what I was trying to explain. Uh, the math just isn't going to work, right? But between acquisition, development, and sales, the math just isn't going to work. And in order for that to work, you're going to have such a, you got to have such a volume to make, to make, to make that happen. My suspicion is that um, I think they're going to be re-looking at this in a few years down the road when they realize that it didn't actually get what they wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, they're gonna go ahead and, and tone down um, these criteria of 50% because it's just the math just doesn't work. The, town, uh, the county of Arlington actually had no requirements. They let the market do it. Uh, I don't know how successful it has or been or hasn't been. They've been tied up in lawsuits ever since they adopted it about a year ago, which by the way, that's what's gonna happen here. Like, if you don't think lawsuits are going to get filed on this to I try believe, to... I uh, believe that's to already happening with one neighborhood. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, there, there's going to be lawsuits filed to go ahead and try to, to slow it down. But that, that's a great future show. Because I just, off the top of my head, I can't really do it. But what we could do is we could go take a look at, a, like I just outlined, a home or a piece of property in Belmont or Fry Springs or 10th and Page on it and do an analysis and say, okay, like I'm acquiring it for this. Let's, let's look at a, let's look at a uh, scenario where we're doing ten, a 10 unit project on, on there. It's, it's also, Jerry, the cost of construction, you've got to get the density up, right? You just, the small, just like you noted on ADUs, the smaller the number of units, the more expensive it is, obviously. The more number of units, the cheaper it is, right? You just get to spread your expenses across more units. But it, I think it's Alexandria, <laughs> not Arlington, who abolished single family, uh, single family zoning altogether. Uh, if Neil's still watching, he, he could probably, I believe it was Arlington. Well, is it, it's in, the, in today's newspaper. It was at Alexandria? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alexandria abolished. Um, Single family uh, well, it, zoning in November. Yeah, so so they, Charlottesville councilors did not do that. They did not abolish single family zoning. Single family zoning. Yeah, yeah. but the, the county of uh, okay, I'll have to double check it. But Arlington also did a missing middle um, zoning, or is very similar to the one that was adopted before. I think Alexandria eliminated single family detached. We did not eliminate single family detached. But here's the reality of it: How many vacant lots are there in the city of Charlotte's. I mean, not many. So it, it's not really going to be too impactful. Uh, Merry we, Christmas we should, from John Blair. Same to you, John. Thank you. We should do an ROI on it and, and take a look at what it looks like to go ahead and do it. But you, you will see this bell curve, the low end of it. There'll be the low-hanging fruit. It'll be garage conversions, basement conversions, or internal conversions <clears throat> in it. That's where it'll stay for, for quite a few years. I think what'll happen is, is then they'll realize that they're going to have to tweak this affordability percentage a little bit in order to get, get some. Um, because at this level, it's too much for anything to actually become a reality. Just doesn't, the math just doesn't work. Yeah. And, and, and John was 100% right. It's in, it, it's in hundreds, right? Uh, Deep Throat has this comment. He sent this to me. He's out at his uh, Bozeman, uh, Montana oh, estate. Cool. Cool. As we speak, um, he says, um, one crazy thing that no one's talking about, these guys clearly did not understand that footprint applies per building and not per lot. They thought that an RA total footprint of buildings would be 3,000 times three stories or 9,000 square feet max. Sure, but that is per building, he says. The footprint limit per lot is given by the coverage area limit. So on an RA lot of 18,000 square feet, you, could, you can build three structures, each can be owned fee simple, and each can have a 3,000 square foot footprint up to three stories. In theory, on less than half an acre, you could have three 9,000 square foot mansions. Well, they wouldn't be mansions. They would. They would be three nine thousand. They would be three six twelve units. Yeah, and apartments, apartment towers, probably. The, here's the problem with that. Now half of them have to be affordable, and that math just, just isn't going to work, right? Because we're over to ten. Right. We're over to ten units. Um, look, the reality of it, there isn't that many half acre lots 
In the city. In the city, right. Unless they buy something and tear it down. Unless they buy something and tear it down. Or, Logan Wells, Clay Logan, good morning. Or they assemble, right? Because, you know, one of the, the first things that happens in a development world is you start assembling parcels. We talked parcels. about that yesterday, right, Judah? Yeah. Assemblage. Yeah, assemblage. And that's actually the hardest thing for developers to do is actually to assemble because you're dealing with a lot of different situations and relationships to go ahead and do that. Uh, in the way the math works, in, in theory, he's correct. Um. But the reality of it is uh, that's probably not going to happen. I, I think the only real positive thing that happened out of this as far as that is I want a bottle of booze. You want a bottle of I bourbon. I want a bottle of bourbon, right? Yeah. It, it's going to stay flat for a while, right? There, I, Lloyd Snook was sitting here, and, and we had this conversation. They're going to start tweaking it and ratcheting up, up and down. They're going to see what's going to work. They don't know what they don't know yet. More importantly... The, the development community doesn't know, you know, what's going to happen is everybody's going to stare through these 400 pages and go, okay, what does it really mean? And how is it really going to impact? And how can I really get, get stuff done? And there's a lot of smart people, way smarter than me, that are out there tearing this stuff apart and trying to figure out how can we move forward. And it came up in a, in a meeting I had with my executive director for uh, the land trust. Okay, how can we use this to benefit the land trust. Is this a great position for the land trust to go ahead and do it? And in, in theory, it is, except the acquisition is off the charts. I mean, my God, right? We, we, if, I, if I want to buy a single-family detached unit in the, <clears throat> in the city of Charlottesville right now, we're looking at medium sales price of a half a million bucks. Now, i got to buy that for a half a million bucks. Then I got to do all the infrastructure. Let's assume we keep the building. And then what else am I adding to it? It's just the, 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 the ROIs and a lot, of, a lot of folks are going to be start putting them together. And we'll do that here for the show in the beginning of January. It's just going to be the slow roll forward. But low-hanging fruit will be garage conversions. And what we, should make, we should take a look at that a year from now. How many actually got implemented? What do you think ballpark is for a garage conversion? So that's, much, that's much cheaper than an ADU, an exact, and a detached. Um, we flirt with a hundred thousand. I figure about a buck and a half. One fifty. Good I, lord. I would think so. Yeah. What is the return on investment of one fifty at this at, at at interest rates? I mean, because they're well, not. Well, what you what you would need to do is you would need to get on um, Airbnb and figure out. So if I owned. Because you, you would say that those would become Airbnbs because the well, people that's where the live in the house. Gonna, that's where the math's going to work. Yeah. Right? Because so, they could get the premium. That's a good call, Keith. Yeah, that's where the math's going to work. Right? So if you go on Airbnb right now and look in what, what an Airbnb costs in um, City Belmont. City of Charlottesville? No, do Belmont. Okay. Right? So you would buy a house in Belmont or you own a house in Belmont and you've got a detached garage in the back. This is what happened in Seattle and Portland. And uh, you go ahead and so just the, the development end of it, right? So let's assume you got a slab. Let's assume you got four walls, right? Obviously a roof on it. You know, the structure itself is in sound condition and, and can handle it. Now you've got to bring in water and sewer into that, which is going to be expensive. Yeah. Right. So what a lot of people don't know about that. If I want to bring, bring that into there, I have to go all the way out. To, just assume it's in the street. I got to go all the way out to the street, make a tap into it. There is bonds that have to be posted, right? I have to go through all that expense and brain damage to tap into the water because it has three bucks a night. It has to. Is that what it is? That math won't work. You're seeing eighty three. I'm seeing a uh, thirty five for a room in a townhouse close to UVA. Seventy one, fifty eight. Yeah, I, I, eighty eight, ninety five for individual rooms. Yeah, so you would look look. Who you would, in the right mind would convert that to? to I get think that kind I think of money? your numbers are low. I think if you like, take a look at a one bedroom. Oh, I am one bedroom detached. Right. Let's see here. You got a like a, a what well, they do? They call it a whole house. They got one in Belmont, right behind Bell Coffee. Yeah, across the street for, from Tavola. Yeah, there you that go. blue house. Yeah, I know it. You know the one I'm talking about? I know it. Yeah. There used to be a whole, I thought you were talking about Tavola. It used to be the contractor was there yeah. on the first level. $83 a night. Yeah, that math won't work. For a one-bedroom, one-bed, one-bath. That math won't work. 
Yeah, I, I, you know, no you, one in their right mind would do this that has any kind of sophistication. Yeah. So, the only way, the, so the only way that that, so if we're going to go ahead and take a garage and convert it and spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, your estimate is you're a class A contractor. So Santa Claus is coming on Friday, mm -hmm. right? And then we're all taking a bit of a break. Yeah, next week we're off. So what I'm going to do during the break? You're going to do a on a garage. I'm going to I'm going to oh, go, I'm going to I'm going to do a, a cost of construction. I'm writing this down on a garage and site plan utilities, and I'm going to run I'm going to run a um, COG cost of construction COC cost of construction and a COD cost of development to convert a garage an existing garage, and I will go ahead and pull something that's up that's for sale and do that. But I, I think we already know the math isn't going to isn't going to work. So how is this going to make a difference? How is this going to happen? So That's what, why I called it window dressing. Well, you got to start. Uh, I'll push back a little bit. Okay, please. Um, I think today it's, it may look like that. Uh huh. But how do you start any journey, right? It's the first step. So I think this was a good, I, the zoning ordinance needed to be amended. Again, I'm in favor of it, right? But it's just going to take a very long time, and what's going to happen is going to stay flat for a while. The bell curve is going to shoot up, and then and then it'll start getting to the point where it will start being impactful. But I think I think I think you're at 2033. I think 2033 is somebody's going to look at this and go, okay, it made a little bit of a difference, but it probably won't start ramping up until the until 2030, 20. 28, 2029, 20, something along those lines. It's just going to stay flat. But you got to start somewhere, Jerry, right? right? You got to start somewhere. It wasn't working the way it was, right? Right? We weren't having, if you were looking for increased density or increased uh, housing stock, it wasn't doing, I, I was part of a... Um, if you did $150,000 a loan at a 7.5% interest Dude, that, rate. That, that wouldn't work. On a 30-year amortization schedule, your payment every month would be over $1,000. Yeah. If you're renting the I, I think garage could, for 85 bucks a, no, no, a I, night. I think your number's low. I think that's I'm looking a, at it. I, I got it. But I think you could rent a, a, a well-done garage Airbnb for about a buck 25, buck 50. That blue house on Hinton Avenue yeah, well, is, is nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's use simple math. Call it a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks a night. Yeah. yeah. So bare minimum. You'd have to rent. You'd have. You'd to, have to rent them ten nights, bare minimum a month, just to cover your mortgage, and yeah. then you, that doesn't even include the cleaning fees and all the hassle of so having someone live in your garage. That's why after they adopted this in Portland and Seattle, and it took a couple of years before everybody realized it. This is why they ended up working with the land trusts and other other nonprofits to go ahead and do that because those folks have access to grant money, so forth and so on. So we can go ahead and, and do that. That's where I think this is, if you want to help affordable affordability, that's where it's gonna go. But it's just not, it's just, it's, you know, it's just gonna take a long time to go ahead and do that. I know I'm repeating myself. No, 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 you're doing great, Keith. But, but it, it, well, I mean, it's just, there's nothing else more you're doing great, dude. Yeah, I mean, but we could talk about this until we're blue in our face. It's just not going to have a huge impact. But it was needed. It was needed. The, the question's going to be, how are they going to figure out the implementation of it? Forget about the math. And forget about the reality, the economic realities of it. They're going to have to figure out how they're going to implement this, how they're going to approve it, how it's going to go through the system. This thing about August just blows my mind. I, I don't, Dude, it's bananas. I don't, I, don't, I don't get that. I'm going to read again what Neil wrote. This blew I just don't my mind that. what I didn't Neil get a wrote. I to read that. This, and and if it, it's the lead story on the Free Enterprise Forum as we speak. I'm going to read it. Um, I don't think they legally can do that. 
Well, that's what he said. He said, I also anticipate in the coming weeks there will be legal challenges from some who believe the process did not treat their parcels or projects fairly. The City Council decision to evaluate all site plans submitted after August 31 under the new zoning code seems ripe for such a legal challenge. How could the applicants conform to an ordinance that was not yet settled law? So, so there's, there's two things going on here. So what got approved was zoning. Now, in the zoning ordinance, they have certain site plan criteria, certain requirements, right? Massing, so forth and so on. And I've been saying this forever. That's only half, that's only one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is the site plan process. And this is, you know, how you make connections to your uh, infrastructure, to your infrastructure, you know, uh, traffic impact, so forth and so on. That, that is a whole, that's the actual implementation of the process. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. On that end of it. And then there's a third coin, which is, oh, by the way, you've got to comply with the building codes uh, on, on, on as far as egress and <clears throat> fire suppression and so forth and so on in that kind of thing. So I, I don't know if they're talking about zoning or they're talking about site plan. If you could read that again. Did he use the word site plan? I will read it to you verbatim, and then we'll get to Woody Fitchum's comment. Um, I also anticipate in the coming weeks, this is from Free Enterprise Forum, Neil Williamson, headline Winston Churchill and Charlottesville's new zoning ordinance. I love it, Cindy Luhu. He says, he writes, I also anticipate in the coming weeks there will be legal challenges from some who believe the process did not treat their parcels or projects fairly. The city council decision to evaluate all site plans submitted after August 31 under the new zoning code seems ripe for such a legal challenge. How could the applicants conform to an ordinance that was not yet settled by law? Judah, do you remember? This was the exact topic we talked about yesterday on the show. So, yep. so you would need to compare site plan ordinances, the current one, assuming that's, because they only changed the zoning ordinance. I, I don't think they completely digested or tweak the site plan portion of it, but let's assume that they did on it. So you would have to look, I think, you would have to look at the current site plan thing and the, uh, the old one, and if this is more in favor, right, this allows more density, less setbacks, so forth and so on, then it's actually a, in a benefit to the applicants that are there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if, if this new, and I just haven't done a side by side, so if this new, um, zoning ordinance is less restrictive, that's the word I was looking for, than the old one, then I don't know if it's going to end up in a lawsuit because it's only beneficial to the people that have applicants in it. If it's more restrictive than the old one, oh, sure as hell there'll be lawsuits. Yeah. Right, right. So right. We, have to, we, we have to add, I, I'm just, I'm winging it here because I didn't get a chance to take a deep dive into it, but there'd be a great question for Neil. Is the new more restrictive or less restrictive than the old, the site plan uh, analysis for it. This from Woody Fincham watching the program. Fantastic appraiser. I applaud the politicians that are open to change. That's a start. However, the solution to the issue is in Almaro County. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. But the political capital is not there to expand the developmental area. So on that thing, I, I, I've sent a few slides off to um, Judah. To Judah. So um, I'm, I'm using a new software program that ties into Realtor.com, and we're able to take a look at listing, ca listing counts and so forth, so which I can't look at in Paragon. Hopefully, there's a rumor out there that uh, Carr will start using uh, showing that, time. I think that rumor came on the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday edition of yeah, Realtor. I think I may have got myself into trouble on that. But in any event... Um, <clears throat> It's just a rumor. A little birdie told me this. Little birdie. Uh, which is a great tool. We should have done it a long Your time ago. Your little birdies are quite accurate. My little birdies are pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, but if you pull up slide number one. Okay. So these are, the, these are the total number of home for sales, including active and pending per month. So this is going back two years. This is from 2022 to 2023. What's important to look at here, that red line is the national averages. The orange is what we have. And I, we, we will stay away from the numbers. But back to your point about, about we are performing 
outperforming or overperforming the nation, it's very clear right there. I mean, we're, we're ridiculously below as far as active inventory uh, listing counts go. And that's going to worsen. It's going, it's, going to, it's going to worsen. Slide number two. Slide two, J-Dubs. Which is something I've been wanting to take a hold. Remember we talked about price reductions? I love this photo on the bottom of the slide with Keith and Yona. And, <laughs> and the dog. And the beautiful dog and right the there. And the dog, yeah. yeah. So you take a look at the delta between what the national price reduction is, is on the far right, and then us. Yeah. You know, forget about the particular numbers. So the numbers on the right of the slide are in hundreds of thousands because it takes care national. of the whole national yeah. to the left. I mean, we're in single digits. Right. Single digits on that. So we're not doing huge price reductions. We, we don't, our listing count's not there. Number three is pending. And all I really want folks to focus on is the delta between the, the national and what we're doing. New listing counts. So these are ones that are, this is number four. I the, like this data. Thank you. Um, you it, did a good it, job with these. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a new program. I can't manipulate it. I just tell it that I want the city of Charlottesville and it generates it. Um, unlike the stuff that we do off of Paragon that I can kind of uh, manipulate it. But what I wanted to uh, take a look at, if you put up slide number five, Judah, <clears throat> see, that is the median list price. The list price for available homes in the market, not sold price. These are, so these are homes that were listed. You see how we're above the nation on the back end of it? Uh, again, this is two years going out. We're, we're tracking you know, pretty much up and down, but we are now starting around September and October higher than the nation, higher than the nation. So I posted these on my um, Facebook page. Facebook page. I saw that. This is take, you could take a, take a look at it. That, along with interest rates dropping, the city of Charlottesville... It's just going to get more expensive. Population increase. Well, that's exactly right. The population increase. But it's just going to, it's, you know, but look, they, they did the right thing, I think, and move, move forward. It just blew my mind that the volume of sales, single family detached, we haven't seen that since 2011. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed rate mortgages with conforming balances decreased to 6.83%. Mm -hmm. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed rate mortgages with conforming loan balances, 726, 200 or less, so below jumbo threshold, yeah. Yeah, yeah. decreased to 6.83% from 7.07. We are now firmly under 7%. Yeah, and you're actually- From October to now, we're looking at over a point in change and drop. And if you go ahead and Google this, Google if I've got an 800 credit score, uh -huh. what my what my 30 year rate's going to be? It's going to be much less than that. Mm -hmm. So credit score <coughs> right now is more important than it has been in in, in the past because their lending standards are tightened. The lender standings are tightened, but if you have a higher credit score and you bring a little bit more cash to the table, right, or buy points down, your interest rates are considerably less than that. Have you seen any in the fives yet? No, 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 no. What's yet. the lowest you've seen so About far? About six two. Six two? Mm -hmm. Recently? Just just yesterday with a client of ours. No, uh, new, con mutual, new construction? Mutual, new construction, mutual friend of ours. Yeah. Locked in at six two. Six two. It's not bad. Uh, very good credit score. Yeah. Brought twenty percent down. Yeah. Six two. Six two is a great rate. Yeah. Um, you know, what's the average? Seven something, seven and a quarter, seven and a point five over <clears throat> since 1972. Uh, six is a, you know, six and a quarter, six and a half is a, is a, is a great rate. It's not 2%. It was interesting. I, I did this interview for Reese Media. Oh, how did that go? Uh, National Media for Yeah, Christmas. real good. It was, um, um, I have to be careful. I'm going to get myself... Because it's not out yet, technically. It's not right? out yet, yeah. Yeah, so you had to speak into the future. I will get to the comments coming on the feed here. Yeah, that, was, to... that was weird. I had a hard... I, my, little, my little ADD had a hard time doing that, you know, talking about something a month in the future and all this stuff. But... It, it's challenging when it comes to real estate, too, because it changes so fast. Well, the topic was interest rates. Right. So were you like, how were... <laughs> 
I'm pretty good at this. So I, I know you are. So I mean, I, you're I, extremely good. At I, so I, 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 I did. But in a, a month, they could I, I, drop I did, another. I did a well. Look at what they did from October to now. So, um, so the question I got asked. <clears throat> so there was a moderator. There was four, three other panelists on it. So there was a Jerry Miller oh. asking questions. Not, not, there was not a Jerry Miller, but there was a so Jerry pace Miller. A pace setter. A pace set. Well, no, yeah. he was a moderator. Yeah. And he was asking questions. And I didn't know what the questions were before he asked the questions. Okay. Uh, I just knew it was about interest rates and how do we uh, discuss interest rates with our buyers. And the question I got asked was, how do I feel about the term date the rate married a house? Ah, I hate that term. And I literally, that's what I said. I said date oh, the rate, I, no, I marry hate, the house, date the rate. I hate that, I hate that. And why do you hate it? I can tell you why I hate it. Well, first of all, I just think it's a goofy saying. But, you know, all this conversation we got going on there before, and maybe not to be, not to take it down to the lower level, but, you know, way back when, people were buying houses because of a low rate and maybe not buying the right house. And you're going to find out, I think you're going to find out when you start seeing NAR come out with data in the beginning of next, beginning of next year, that you're going to find out there's a group of people out there that hate their house, but love their rate. So you know what? When it's time to buy, it's time to buy. People hate their house, but love their rate. Oh yeah, you're going to find a lot of that going on. They hate their house because they went out and bought something because of the rate and it was phonetic and everybody was doing multiple offers and all this crazy stuff and they bought a house because they loved the rate, right? They married the rate and they're dating the house. Now they're trapped. Most people, if they've got to move, they feel, they call them golden handcuffs. They're kind of trapped. They're trapped in it. Some people that are sophisticated and, and blessed and not trapped and, and are flexible can do that. But 90% of the people that I ever work with over the decades is they always buy a house based on the monthly payment, how much I can afford per month. They don't care what the interest rate is. I mean, it's all that factors into the equation, you know, price and, and rate, but they're focusing on how much per month. But there's, a, I think there's going to be a group of people out there, and I think they're out there now, that... Uh, married the rate, and they're dating the house, and they're not happy with the dating, the dating process. So what are they going to do? Potentially list? Well, I think what's Rob gonna, Neal, hello. Welcome I think I show. think I think what's going to happen here, um, and we probably should make another bet on this. So oh, I, I another can, bet. So I can uh, uh, so I can lose again. Um, no, you uh, won this bet. I, I know that, but I have to give an opportunity. The Catholic in me feels guilty about it. No, don't feel. I guilty. do. I feel very guilty about it. <laughs> He's laughing over there. I do. I feel guilty about it. You should it. feel guilty. That was I a good do. bet. I feel guilty about it. <laughs> it uh, came down to the last meeting of the year. Yeah, yeah. I was close, though. It was No, you won. It was close. It was The bet was, would upzoning be approved in 2023? It was approved Monday on the 18th, the last meeting of the year. So you want to give the bottle to Santa Claus on Friday? The bottle's staying here, right? So oh, you can drink it? Doesn't it stay at the bar? Stay, of course, it stays at the bar. Okay, but I'm but not. I'm, gonna, happy to get I'm not going to be here on Friday. Santa Claus is going to be here on Friday. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ugh. Do we want to get well, Santa a, Claus? Will give it to me. I'm happy to. I'm, I was going to get rum. You get whatever you want. No, bourbon. no, no. I know you. I, I, you won the bet. I, you like rum more than scotch or bourbon. I'm getting you rum. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The, uh, so you're flying down to St. Martin and tonight, I, buddy? The rum from St. Martin. <laughs> that is damn good rum, the rum you have. <laughs> I might have to get your suggestion on... Actually, why don't you let me know now. What is the rum that I get at ABC that you like? Is there a rum? Yeah, you've got to fly down to St. Martin and go ahead and I know it's and, not. And, and I, I wouldn't do buddy. anything. Like, I don't know you, much about rum. But you've got to go through the, this dirt road. You knock twice on the door. His favorite rum is, is essentially a uh, small, small batch. A super small batch. From St. Martin, yeah. where his family goes. Craft small yeah. batch yeah. rum, right? Yeah. I will, you, you buy me whatever you feel is appropriate. Well, I don't know what the rum, I don't know anything about rum. Uh, this sounds like, are we getting into a little bit of a spat here? About no, this? we just, we sound like we're married right here. I, I, w <laughs> I was going to say that, but I decided not to say it. We sound like an old married couple. Rum choices. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look it up here. I really it's like, don't It's mind. like talking to my mother and father. Whatever you want to do. Whatever this, you want to yeah, do. Yeah, right. That's how my wife would ask. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'll ask the clerk at the store. I have an esteemed, beloved friend that yeah. I need to buy a bottle yeah. of rum for. What do you suggest? Yeah, so um, off air, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know because the, the, 
the the name um, escapes me at the at, okay. the at at the moment. So okay. we'll go ahead and look at it. Look, um, I do want to do something for Ray Cadell. If you can tag Ray Cadell. Ray Cadell, I'm tagging you. I think Ray's watching the program right um, now. We love you, Ray Cadell. Um, I'm taking my mother and father to see Ray Cadell. Oh. And Matt Law, I think is his last name. This the, the Elvis. El the Elvis impersonator. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're taking them for Christmas. My, my, mother, and, my mother in particular are, is a huge uh, Elvis fan. And we're going to take them out there and... And spend that, and um, spent a little bit of extra money, and got kind of a close to the front, the front center. And uh, I'm going to be waving at Ray uh, <clears throat> and Matt, and we're going to do a little dinner beforehand, and and watch. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, be evidently, that's a world class Elvis. It's it's apparently world class Elvis. Yeah. And your and and Pop loves Elvis. Uh, my mother does. Okay. We have to. We have to. I have to keep an eye on her. Make sure she doesn't do something uh, a little off color. <laughs> she watches the show. She, mom does watch. She the watches show. the show. Mom does watch Be the careful. show. Be careful. We love. She, we mom love does her. yell at me. But a shout out to Ray Cadell. It, there, I. I think there's a few tickets left. I looked at it this morning. My sister's coming in from New York City. On, I was trying to get a, a get a seat for her, but I. I think there may be a few seats left. Uh, but it's supposed to be an awesome show, and I'm looking forward to it. Steven watching the program. You know how lucky um, we are to have a guy of that level in this town? Steven says, I, I want both you gentlemen to know that I look forward to Real Talk. You guys do a fantastic job. I look forward to the data that Keith presents. And I'm curious what Keith's plans are as he heads to his five-year anniversary of shows and how he will make a show that we already love even better. Oh, wow. That... It's funny. That's what's been running through my noodle for months. How, you know, how can we make it better? How can we do better? And you know what? You know the simplest way to figure that out? You mm. tell me. Not you, but the viewer and listeners. Tell, what, what do you want for us to do? As long as it's legal. And maybe yeah. just a little illegal, right? <laughs> um, uh, a little illegal is okay. Yeah. little illegal. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's something that... I, it keeps me up at night. How can I do this? Because when we first started this, oh. it was like, yeah, let's just wing it. Right? And it's become, this is an awesome responsibility. And I, and I don't take it lightly. And I don't take the fact that people watch and listen and invest their time, right? That's Religiously. What's, what's the one thing you can't make more of, right? Time. Time, right? And they invest their time and energy to go ahead and, and spend time with us. Um, and I take it real seriously. And, you know, I, I, I always want to get better. My bar's a little low anyway, so, you know. No, it, it, Beth Mark, hello. Yeah. But, you know, look, I, 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 think, I think what makes the show good is our open honesty. We... I make, a, I make a bunch of mistakes. I will continue to make a bunch of mistakes. I'm okay with making mistakes, right? It makes me human on it. But, you know, one of the things that I think is the, the great thing about what we do is our ability to be honest and our ability to be open and vulnerable, at least, at least on my end of it. So, But please tell me how I can make it better. I I'm in. It. And what's the plan for Friday, my friend? Friday, Santa Claus is going to be here. Um, Santa Claus, Buddy the Elf is going to be. I love Buddy uh, across from me. <laughs> I think the director is going to be Frosty the Snowman. Oh, and what we can do? Talked about people that are watching and listening. <laughs> I love Buddy the Elf. Um, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of similarities there. Love Buddy the Elf. Uh, but the goal here is for people to tell Santa Claus what they want for Christmas, related around housing. Mm. So go ahead and and chime in and say you know give give your your Christmas wishes to Santa Claus on it and uh, we're, we're going to go ahead. Santa Claus may have a sip of some new rum apparently I, that's no, going to be on it's gonna on happen set. Today. You're going to have him suggest what you want Santa to drink. And then uh, that, that's that was my thought. My thought was is just to have to have a little bit of fun and see what Santa Claus can bring. So if you I actually went there yesterday and did not know what to buy. So my friend, we know each other well enough to know whatever you would have got would have been good enough for me. I know, but I, yeah, thank you for saying that. 
Thank would you, have, sir. Whatever you would have got would have been good enough for that was, You're a good man. You're a good man. We, um, we, I mentioned this yesterday on the I Love Seville show. I have a business meeting this over lunch today. Which good I luck. will be heading to. Thank you. There's no I Love Seville show today um, as we're having a lunch. Real Talk with Keith Smith, the last one of the year is Friday. That's right. And we're taking off till when? Ah, uh, let's see. I gotta look. At the I think calendar. the third, right? At least is real talk. Is January third, right? Real talk will be back on the third of January. There you go. Um, as we're traveling from Long Island and Long, Judah, Long, 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 Long Island, Long. and Judah will be uh, uh, roasting s'mores and singing Christmas carols and ringing in the new year from his estate in Almaro County. Is that right? You're you're staying local, J Dubs. Yep. Definitely. Absolutely. It's an estate. Yeah. Look who knew. Didn't know I knew a guy who owned an estate. Look at that. The humble uh, Judah abode is quite spectacular. It's quite spectacular. Um, the Friday edition of Real Talk is going to be festive. We may have a couple of special folks pop oh, in. Oh, I hope we out. do. You normally do. Uh, no, I, I wanted just to really be focused on, on Buddy the Elf and, okay. and Santa Claus. And, and I really wanted, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll do some. I'll do some posting. I, I really want the folks, the viewers and listeners to say, okay, what is your housing wish for Santa Claus? And let's see if Santa Claus can, can make it happen for you. I uh, appreciate uh, all the viewers and listeners watching the program. you got a hard stop. I do. I do have a hard stop right now. This is the, fr the Wednesday edition of Real Talk. And make sure you put the Friday edition of Real Talk on your calendar because a festive spirit will be very present on this program. For Judah and Keith, this is Real Talk with Keith Smith. Archived at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Thank you kindly for joining us. And so long, everybody. That was awesome. Cindy Lou Who, that was awesome. Thank you. <coughs> um, um. One second. Mike's going to